There's just one little thing you should know about me before we begin, and it's that I was born in 1989. Just kidding, gotcha. I was born in 1996. Welcome to my Eras Tour vlog. I am literally so excited because I'm about to attend six nights of the Eras Tour. This is like athlete behavior. This is gearing up for a marathon. This is, <laughs> this is excellence, I have to say. So I'm gonna be attending all six nights of the Eras Tour in Singapore. I am nervous, I'm scared, I'm excited, I'm afraid at what surprise song mashups I'm gonna be attacked by. But most of all, I am just so jazzed and pleased to be able to put myself in a position where I can go to all these shows. Something I wanted to address kind of like off the top is the like question that I get a lot of the time, which is how do you get your tickets? Do you have any tips? And you know, the cold hard truth of seeing a bunch of people going to many different shows is that it costs money. Four out of the six nights that I'm attending, I got resale tickets on StubHub and my tickets were all upwards of 500 US dollars. And yeah, the only reason that I am able to go to these shows is because I can afford it. And that's kind of the cold harsh truth that nobody wants to say. There's no secret, there's no magic to getting tickets. If you miss them in the general sale, pretty much your only option is to buy a resale. Now, what I found with the international shows in general is that there seems to be a less crazy resale market. Like that I'm still getting price gouged for what I paid for the Eras tour, but when I compare the price of what I'm paying here to what I was looking at when I was in Chicago, it's like a vast, vast difference. So if you are an international fan, I think these tickets are a little bit cheaper comparably, but it's, they're still expensive. And I also wanna be clear that you don't need to go to multiple era shows. I am mentally ill. <laughs> that is why I am going to, in total, 13 shows. I have been a Taylor Swift fan for my entire life and part of my job is making content and going to the Eras tour is a really a great opportunity for me to make that content. Plus it's also fun. It's like a childhood dream lived and come true. I first saw Taylor Swift when I was 14 years old on the Speak Now tour in Singapore and I was all the way up in the stand and I was just so blown away and enchanted by the girly that I saw on stage. And you know, this is kind of like inner child care. It's self care for me to go to 13 years tour shows, okay? I'm being facetious, obviously. So don't feel as though you are not a big fan or you're not a good fan for not attending more than one show. And also let me be clear that attending one show is like very much enough. This tour is insane. It was designed with the super fan in mind. It's extremely long. I feel like at the end of my first show when I saw the Ears tour, in Chicago, I was like, damn, like that was, I felt very satiated. Whereas when I saw the Speak Now tour in Singapore, it was such a condensed version of the tour. She only played like 12 or 13 songs. She didn't play anything from debut, which was a crime. So I feel that this is really, you know, bang for your buck. So if you are only going to one show, I feel like, you know, the shows are so heavily documented on social media, you'll get to see all the different surprise songs. You can barely hear anything anyway when you're there. So like really ask yourself before <laughs> wasting money on tickets if you you know are able to do that. I would say don't overextend yourself. So that's kind of my, my top line message for everybody asking how I'm going to so many shows and why, that's your answer. A challenge that I've been navigating when it comes to going to the Eras Tour in Singapore is trying to think of like what to wear and it is really hot and humid here and I'm just not in the mood to struggle. Like I will not wear pants, long sleeves, top, shorts, anything. So it's gotta be something that is breathable. And I have a huge collection of vintage Taylor tees and I'm gonna wear a different one every single night. And I have corresponding custom made shoes from an incredible fabric and leather painter. Her name is Teresa. Her brand is called iKulai. And she has done incredible work with me on my jacket and boots that I got for the Eras Tour in Chicago. And she has made me a custom pair of white sneakers for every single era that I have chosen for the six shows that I'm attending in Singapore. And I can't wait to show you them all. Four of them came in the mail today. They had to be shipped separately. I designed the shoes, so I picked like what I wanted to be on the shoes and then I sent it to Teresa and said, you know, use your creative license, do what you need to do. So why don't we go through the shoes that have arrived? I have four pairs here. I have my Fearless shoes, my Speak Now shoes, my 1989 shoes, and my Midnight shoes. These are the 1989 shoes. They're so cute. I was kind of like unsure of what exact shade of blue I wanted these to be, but I think Teresa did a really good job. When I was creating the old era shoes, I was like, do I want to be incorporating like Taylor's version stuff into it, like vault tracks? And then I was thinking, you know, when it feels appropriate, I definitely will. And 1989, I mean, is it over now? Apparently, according to my song ranking, has entered my top 10 Taylor Swift songs of all time, which is psycho, but I have included that on the toe box of the shoe. Classic white wayfarers, some daisies, some stars. 
Baby were the new romantics, a beautiful picture of the sea because you know, the sea, seagulls, it's kind of the 1989 thing. I'm finally clean, a Polaroid, Polaroid pictures. And then on the other side, we have a paper airplane, welcome to New York, a cassette tape with 1989 written on it. This really cool New York street sign and the Statue of Liberty, because as we know, New York is the main character on 1989. I'm gonna wear these with my 1989 world tour t-shirt. And then these are my fearless shoes. I love how these came out. Again, with color, I was like, I don't wanna do that pissy yellow that she picked. It's not really my favorite shade or hue. So I got Teresa to do this very nice gold. And this was kind of a little bit of a debut Fearless hybrid. I didn't do a debut shoe because I have the Swiftologist boots that are made like as replicas of those debut boots that she wore. So here I have Today Was a Fairy Tale and a cute little castle and Forever and Always with the hearts, You Okay, that sign from You Belong With Me. Capture it, remember it because I will be capturing it and also remembering it. The Fearless key, the sparkle guitar, which didn't exactly come out as sparkle, but I think that must have been very difficult to achieve for Teresa. And these hand hearts, of course, with a 13 on them. And then the cassette tape that says Fearless on the toe box. Here's another Taylor's version inclusion. The toe box of this shoe says, hello, Mr. Perfectly Fine. And on the side, I have Love Story and the Junior Jewels shirt and a white horse with It's Too Late to Catch Me Now, cute little yellow butterflies. And then a phone with the words, you said forever and always, you didn't mean it, baby. So I also tried to pick like, instead of going for just like the basic representations of the album, which of course I wanted to have some of, I also wanted to go into like the lyrics that I love and the songs that mean a lot to me, whether or not they're like super popular. So wait till you see my red shoes, the holy ground design gags. It's so good. I was worried that the color scheme for my midnight shoes and my speak now shoes were going to be too similar, but Teresa did a really good job of like differentiating them while still keeping that like purpley vibe for midnights too. And I think the midnight shoes might be some of my favorite. They're just so intricate and detailed. This was the first pair that she sent me and I was truly gagged. I mean, look at this. This is not something that you can go to Aldo and get. You can't go to Foot Locker and buy these shoes. These shoes are custom made. So we have the midnight's clock on the toe box, obviously the meet me at midnight. Then I have it's me, hi, I'm the problem. It's me, the anti-hero ghost, dear reader. And then the chess pieces from Mastermind, little Easter eggs from my favorite songs. Then we have the Midnight's cassette and you're on your own kid written in the friendship bracelet. And I'm truly astounded by how Teresa managed to get this level of detail into like what is technically like really a small space. I know I have big feet, but it's still like not that much room to work with. So super impressed with how she did that. I have a moon with question on it. Karma is a cat, of course. And then Gorgina blue and white crystals all around the soles. Very pleased with those. I think the Speak Now shoes might be my favorite. I'm just so partial to the visuals from this era. The toe box says 2 a.m. Who do you love? How cute is that? I had to do more than one enchanted mention because it is just, it's the song, you know? We have a little koi fish, long live friendship bracelet, a dragon, the story of us, these little bows, some lavender. I was enchanted to meet you, but of course. And then we have the koi fish guitar because you can't do a speak now shoe without the koi fish guitar now, can you? Don't you ever grow up? And then we have like a big kind of cascading ball gown. You can see the dress kind of coming over the sides and a little calendar that says December on it because back to December, heard of it. Please don't be in love with someone else. And then a little mailbox for Foolish One. That's a little Easter egg. And then on the other toe, we have the Speak Now vinyl. It's Tuesday morning, it's almost 9 a.m. So I'm gonna have to log on and do some work. They arrived like five seconds later. These are my red shoes. I'm so obsessed with the detail that's put into these. I mean, take a look at this, basically a mural that Teresa painted on a goddamn shoe. So good. And these rhinestones held up really well. So, so, so happy with them. The Reputation shoes also were so good. These were full of like, look what you made me do. Easter egg, some rest, dress references, of course. And I'm just completely gagged by the level of detail that was able to be put into these shoes. Hopefully the rest of my shoes will arrive later today. I need to go to a printer at some point and print off my tickets. Getting the tickets through StubHub has been an extremely stressful experience because they only release them like two or three days before the show. Like I still don't have my ticket for opening night. It's Tuesday, opening night is Saturday. So I'm kind of like waiting on tender hooks here, but I got my front row ticket and that was the most expensive one and the one that I was most worried about. So I have that secured and ready to go. I'm like paranoid about going to a public printer though because I don't have a printer at home. I'm paranoid that someone's gonna like steal my tickets. This is like, you know, Willy Wonka's golden ticket. I am not going to be just, you know, putting it in the hands of anybody. That's ridiculous. So, I mean, I'm gonna have to ask a neighbor or something. Let me, let me have a think on what to do. I need to think about that. Hi divas, it is Thursday, 29th February, two days before the Eras tour starts. And I'm, you know, knee deep in Eras prep. There are rhinestones and glitter kind of all scattered around my room. My entire house is covered in like, just kind of a vague dust of 
blue and pink and purple and you know it's giving pinata it's giving birthday party and i'm kind of i'm kind of here for it i finally got all my tickets i bought most of my tickets resale through stubhub and the really nerve-wracking thing about stubhub is they don't send your tickets to you until maybe even the day of the event but thankfully all of my tickets came in so i can download them all to my phone i have the peace of mind the merch pop-up launches today i believe and I, I i'm kind of torn on whether to go or not obviously since i'm going to six shows i don't have a lot of time <laughs> so I also don't really want to carry around bags of merchandise at the shows, but I think maybe for one of the nights where I'm in the nosebleeds, maybe like on night one, we all know that I try not to over consume Taylor Swift merchandise specifically, but you know, a tradition that I have with myself that I've had since I was like 14 years old is to buy a t-shirt from the Eras tour. And I also really want the blue crew neck. Yes, I've fallen victim to the hype. So if they have it in stock when I go there, I might try and snag it. I think I might try and go during Sabrina Carpenter because I feel like everybody will be like rushing into the stadium to watch her and I'm going to be seeing her six times in a row, so I don't need to be sitting there glued to my seat every single time. So I might use that time to go and get some merchandise. I did want to talk a little bit about, and I try not to talk about this too much because I don't want to like bring attention to it or amplify it, but I did have to make a police report this morning against what appeared to me to be a very credible threat of violence against me at the Eras tour. I was instructed that if I were to be in the same section as a certain person, they were going to jump me. And, you know... I understand that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I really get that. Some people just don't like my content. That's fair enough. But I do not deserve to be physically attacked for making videos. I just don't. No matter what kind of delusional excuse you rationalize in your brain to say that I deserve to get physically jumped for, I don't know, making content. Uh, the punishment never fits the crime when it comes to people piling on me on the internet. So, I mean, at a certain point, like when it crosses into something that I perceive to be serious, I think a lot of my detractors will be like, oh, you take it too serious that you over, well, you know, it's easy to say you overreact when you're not the person receiving hundreds of death threats. And when one of them seems to be very credible and is left by someone who has been happy to keep their name up there, which is exactly what I had today, I just decided I had no choice but to make a police report. And I don't want to be doing that. I really don't want to be going to the ear store and thinking, is someone going to try and physically hurt me? That's not the environment that any of us should be fostering at the Eras Tour. No matter who you don't like that is going, a concert, a Taylor Swift concert is supposed to be like a joyful, celebratory, fun place. And nobody, including me, should have to walk into the Eras Tour and think, am I going to be the victim of some like random attack today? It's really disturbing and upsetting and you know just a further a further signal of the cognitive decline in the taylor nation but that won't stop me that won't stop me these are designed to like try and scare me and to get me to shut up but i never will i will never stop saying the things you don't want me to say taylor swift shouldn't be a billionaire midnight's didn't deserve album of the year i'll just keep saying it over and over and you're going to keep getting mad about it and stamping your feet and i'm going to be front row at the era's tour and i'll be attending six shows in a row so you know a lot of it is just like thinly veiled jealousy or just pure hateration and so to that i say get well soon because i can't help you that's a journey you have to go on by yourself other news it's always crazy how like when something kind of bad happens really good things happen at the same time this insane opportunity has come my way where i might need to fly to london at short notice to participate in a project i don't think i can say anything more than that but at first it was going to be la but it was like super close to when the era's tour was going to be over and then the following week the project is taking place in london so i think that you know I've been talking to my manager today. We're trying to figure out a way to make that happen. They've expressed interest in flying me over. So I'm talking to my management and seeing like what the particulars of that would look like. That's really cool. I'm also going to spend some time after work today, really going through my lecture that I'm giving to a university in Canada. I'm talking about media literacy, fandom, Taylor Swift, uh, pop culture commentary, all of that jazz to a course of undergraduate students in Toronto. So I think that's going to be really cool. I have to stay up super late to do that. It's going to start at like 1am, but I think it's going to be a really good experience for me. And I would love to do more speaking engagements. So if you are a professor or a teacher, I've had so many people reach out to me, professors, and say that I'm on their syllabus. A couple of people use some of my videos in their critical reasoning classes or in their um, media analysis classes. So if you're interested in having me speak, let me know. I would be so down to do it. I think it's a really important thing to talk about, media literacy, pop culture commentary, the ability to think you know, critically about the things that you like. I'm passionate about those things. So hit me up. My email is in the description box of all my videos. I also wanted to talk about going to concerts alone because I mentioned in our Discord that I'm going to be attending four out of the six shows by myself, which you know I was totally fine with until I got a death threat and I had to make a police report. Then I was kind of like, oh, do I really want to be going by myself? But that's not going to stop me. Um, I love going to concerts by myself. 
yourself. I feel like it's such a pure way to like connect with the artists that you love and you really get to like focus all your attention on the artist and the music. And I find it to be really like reflective and like meditative almost. You're just like sitting there being in the show. And I'm really excited to do that for Taylor especially because I am such a big fan and I am a student of her work. So I really am excited to see the stage from all these different angles and really like just get another glimpse and perspective at how she does what she does on stage because she's truly a magical performer. Like her stage presence is, is something that deserves to be analyzed. So I can't wait to have that experience. And yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna meet loads of people. A lot of people have been asking me where I'm gonna be sitting so we can trade bracelets. But unfortunately, I don't think that I should be giving out what sections I'm sitting in because people are trying to jump me. Also, we have the Evolution of a Snake live show announcement coming soon. I've been like looking over drafts of the tour poster and really getting the final details of the venue together. And I am so excited. We have such a fun show planned for everyone and go to evolutionofsnake.com. Give us your email so you can be the first to hear about it. We're also gonna put it on all our socials. So don't worry, you will be hearing about it soon. Also the glitter shoelaces for my shoes arrived and it has made them look 100 million times better. This is the Speak Now pair. Oh, and I'm wearing purple shorts. Wow. Kismet. Kismet. Good morning from me and Gertrude. It is Eros Tour Day. It's Eros Tour Day, Gertrude. Are you so excited? No, you just want to eat blueberries. She just wants to eat her blueberries. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's annoyed with me. I'm so, so excited. I gave my lecture at the University of... Hello. Gertrude is distracting me. I gave my lecture at Toronto Metropolitan University to an incredibly engaged and really smart class. Uh, I talked about Taylor Swift and fandom and media analysis and the importance of cultural criticism. I actually posted the full lecture on Patreon, so if you're interested in seeing the full lecture, what I talked about on the question and answer session we had, you can check that out on my Patreon, patreon.com slash pathologist. Uh, maybe I'll put a little clip of it here just so you can get a sense of like what I was doing. But that was a really amazing and like super fun and insightful thing to do. I also have to update you on that exciting opportunity that I can't tell you anything more about. Um, so they were either going to fly me out to LA or London, but in talks this week, we actually found a way to make it work from Singapore, which is so helpful and such a relief because the filming date of when it would happen is so close to the Eras tour and also just like in the next two or three weeks. So I'm going to be tired and I have a full-time job. So working around that schedule would have been really difficult. It would have just been like logistically like too far to fly for such a short period of time. So I'm happy that we can make it work here and I'm super excited to tell you more about it when I can. It's like 11.30 a.m. now and I need to probably make some more food, some toast with some peanut butter, you know how it is, and then start getting ready because I'm gonna be filming the whole process. So I think it's gonna take a long time. I need to do my 13. I'm gonna do a little bit of makeup. I'm gonna chat through. It should be, a little bit time consuming. So I'm gonna start doing that as soon as I can. It's looking thundery outside. Like it's forecast to be wet and hot for the next week, which is the worst possible combination of things. I cannot for the life of me decide what shirt to pick, what vintage Speak Now t-shirt to pick to wear with my custom shoes. Hello, final check-in before I leave the house. I have landed on my Wonderstruck t-shirt. I'm wearing purple shorts. I did my 13 on my hand. This one is not my best work, but you know, I have dyspraxia. I did my best. I've got my friendship bracelets. Um, I think I talk a little bit more about that on my TikTok. So go take a look if you're interested in that. That's a friendship bracelet that says long live and a dragon. I am just obsessed. They are so cute and I will be rocking the hell out of these. It's also looking like it's gonna rain. So I think I better leave soon.
It is the day after night two of the Eras tour in which I sat front row, an unbelievable, shonking experience, to say the least. I am now getting ready to <laughs> head down to the National Stadium yet again for night three, and I thought it was going to feel worse than it did, as in my body. I mean, like, I thought that my feet would be hurting more, but I think I'm running on fumes now, running on adrenaline. Today was a little bit trickier schedule-wise because I do have a job, so I had to wake up kind of early this morning, extra early actually, to get everything I needed to get done out of the way before I headed down to the Ears tour. It was 
unbelievably hot last night. It was so hot that I really feel I turned into a different person. I was like a Furby that melted into a gremlin. My hair was really just on the struggle bus. I was not having a good time in the heat, but I was rocking harder than anyone alive. So that definitely contributed to the fact that I for sure overheated at certain points. And that was my own fault for jumping and screaming and dancing. But someone had to carry section PD4 or PD3, wherever I was, row one, because the front rows are actually really small when you see them. There's like maybe 20 seats maximum in the actual literal front row. And the people that were beside me were weird. I'm sorry. There was this one guy next to me who barely uttered a word. He randomly had like a mental breakdown when he heard Clean as a surprise song, which relatable content. But for the rest of the show, he just filmed it on his phone the whole time. And he would like get annoyed at people like for maybe like moving their head in his direction. It was so strange. And then the woman next to me was like a woman in her like maybe mid fifties who was just in her normal clothes. Like she was going to the mall and she was texting on her phone and she didn't know anything about Taylor Swift. She didn't know a single song. And she kept asking me, she was like, is this the encore? Is this the encore? And I'm looking at her, I'm like, girl, she asked me this after Red. And I was like, we are barely halfway through the show, Miss Girl. Like you're gonna have to get used to the fact that you are gonna be here for a lot longer. But you know what? Even though she didn't know anything and she was taking photos with her iPhone 4 the entire night, even though she was there, the people next to her, they were like these three, again, middle-aged women who arrived in like the sheen party dresses, you know, as many do, looking great, cowboy boots, looking excited. They're dancing around to love story. Then I look over in folklore and they're gone. They left. They left three front row seats at the Eras Tour in Singapore open. And I think some people eventually did come and like move into their seats or when they left, they gave their seats to these like girls, which was a nice thing to do. But it's kind of like, come on, why are you taking this opportunity away from the real fans? I just don't understand why you would go out of your way to get tickets to something that is so hard to get tickets to. My hunch is that most of the people around me like either bought resale like me or just, I don't know, had some sort of connection with the promoter or something. It was very bizarre. But either way, I rocked harder than anyone alive. I feel like Taylor and I, had a lot of moments. had a lot of moments because I was the only one going buck wild in the front row. Everyone else was like glued to their phones or didn't know the words. And I knew every single word and I was going absolutely am. I took breaks to do like 30 seconds of filming here and there, but I was very strategic about when and where. Most of the time I just wanted to like show my support and like be really fully in the moment with her. And I really felt like I got to have that experience. I felt really connected to her when we were doing Long Live. I was in her direct line of sight because I was like at the edge of the catwalk to the diamond. And like the way that her, the spotlight behind her shines, it literally shines directly on like the people in that row. So we were definitely making eye contact throughout Long Live. I have some really amazing videos of that. And there was one point during Reputation where she like licked her lips and glared at me. And I was like, oh my God, is that a threat? If so, again, please, it was crazy. And it was just insane being able to be that close and just see someone of her caliber and her stature in front row. And it's crazy that I felt so starstruck because I've seen her in the front row basically on every tour that I've been to except for Speak Now. So Red, 1989, Reputation, I was front row for all of those, sh all of those shows. And this one just felt different. I mean, it was so much longer, of course, but the, the, the attention to detail in the production, when you see it up close, her professionalism, the way that she's able to like intimate that she's performing just for you while also simultaneously entertaining a, an entire stadium of people and making everyone even in the very furthest back part of the stadium feel like she cares 
is a real testament to like what an incredible performer she is. So the show was just outstanding, no notes, and it was really hot and she was really struggling. She's also coughing on stage a lot, but she was really struggling and she barely let it show. I just kind of glimpsed that she was, you know, not having a great time with the heat in between when they would like change her outfits on stage or when she would take a break. But, you know, as soon as that light came back on and the camera went up, she was all smiles and excited and happy to be there. And the crowd in general was like a lot louder last night. So that was kind of cool to see. But the people around me, I was like, come on, Taylor Sheesh was sitting a couple of rows behind me. And I have to say, I looked over during Folklore and she was texting on her phone during the last Great American Dynasty. Now, come on, Miss Taylor Sheesh, you have got to, you got to be taking notes. You have a show to do yourself. But either way, it was a wonderful night and one that I surely will not forget anytime soon. The surprise songs that we got, I don't know what I've done to deserve such amazing surprise songs, but I got the story of us and long story short, incredible linkage between those and also Clean and Evermore, which was, I think, the best mashup that we've had so far on tour. But tonight I am doing Midnight's, so I'm manifesting You're On Your Own Kid, I'm manifesting Question Out of the Woods mashup, that's what I want. But yes, I am certainly looking forward to a two-day sabbatical before I get back into my nonsense on Thursday with my fourth year show. It is kind of crazy that I'm doing all these shows. You know, I didn't really think about it until I started doing it. Like just the logistics of it all, realistically, it's uh, time consuming. Tonight, I couldn't be in a more different section than I was last night. I'm in the nosebleeds like all the way back. So I think that's gonna be a really cool experience to have as well, seeing the show from like a bird's eye view. And I will of course record my surprise song reactions. If you're looking for those, they're all on my TikTok. Let's keep going. Let's soldier on through the Eras tour. Review on my seats. I actually really like them. I'm in the very last possible rows. There's no one behind me, meaning I can stand, scream, jump, cry if I want. I am surrounded by children, however, which is not good because I need to be screaming fuck the patriarchy and want to be that's good. But it does look like it's gonna rain. Taylor goes on in literally like 10 minutes and it's looking pretty cloudy. So I'm right next to actually the open back part of the stadium. So I might get wet. Don't want that to happen. Okay, bye. say that the crowd when I was in the nosebleeds crickets it was crickets it was dead nobody knew a single word of the surprise songs people were sitting down during shake it off a lot of people and that to me 
there, I mean, I understand that the nosebleeds are like kind of where the casual fan belongs. Like they're the lowest price tickets. And I think that if you're a casual fan, like you're just gonna go there, I suppose. But the people around me were like scrolling on their phones, like going through their emails and checking texts and like clearing up their inboxes while Taylor was literally on stage. And for that, I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> just go somewhere else. There's like 5,000 people outside every night that are like screaming and crying, dancing around outside. Who could be inside? and you're sitting here with a book. There was literally someone with a book in my section, okay? Somebody's dad. And to him I say, congratulations, but this is not the library. The kind of reading that we need to be doing is not what you're doing in your seat while Shake It Off is out. There was also this little girl in front of me and she was with her parents. And I think that she was just too little to be going to a concert. Because if you think about it, like concerts are super overwhelming for children. Like it's, it's really loud. People are screaming. It's like sensory overload. And she was kind of okay when Sabrina was coming on. I could tell she was struggle to like focus and sit in her seat for a long time. When Taylor came on, the screaming got so loud. She just got completely freaked out. She was like covering her ears and her, her parents didn't bring her earplugs. So someone gave her earplugs and they ended up leaving, I would say probably during Lover. Like they left really, really quickly because she just could not handle the sound. And I had so much fun in the nosebleeds by myself. Again, I'm thinking that going to concerts by yourself is the move. <laughs> like it is so much more fun. I can go to the bathroom whenever I want. I can take a break. I can stand up. I can sit down. I can leave early. You can do whatever you want. And the girls next to me were super sweet. They had flown in from the Philippines and we were really carrying our section. Let me tell you, we were carrying the section. They were having a really good time. They were definitely like very relaxed fans. And like one of them was super sweet and she kept trying to talk to me while Taylor was singing. And I had to keep being like, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I like to meet new people, but I did not come here to make friends. I came here to scream the Cruel Summer Bridge. And if you get in the way of me doing that, you're not gonna like the person that I become. So tonight I'm gonna be sitting kind of in a similar spot to where I was on the first night of the Eras tour, which I'm really not excited about. I'm also sitting there on Saturday. And those seats are just, you know, if you're on the floor and you're like beyond row 10, good luck. Like truly, it's the phones tour. It's everybody's phone in the air. And that is annoying. It is, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna pretend otherwise. So I'm like smack bam in the middle of one of the back sections and I'm not gonna see anything, but I am bringing a friend today. This will be my first time attending the Eras tour with a non Swifty. That'll be a really interesting experience. She's definitely Swifty curious, my friend Jack, and she went to the Jingle Bell Ball in New York in like 2017 with me. This was during the Reputation era, so she did like Look What You Made Me Do. Ed Sheeran came out for Endgame, it was fun. She really loves Reputation and obviously the Reputation set is probably the best one of the Eras tour, so she'll be excited about that. These are the shoes that I'm wearing tonight I mean these might just be my favorite I decided it's time to do red because I can't wait any longer do you see this Teresa did such an incredible job on this this is a holy ground artwork it says I don't want to dance if I'm not dancing with you I am literally obsessed with it the details on this shoe really blew me away in particular so I can't wait to wear these with my red t-shirt a lot of my red era t-shirts have like disappeared somehow I lost a lot of stuff when I was like constantly shuttling back and forth between Singapore and New York and moving apartments all the time so like my red tour shirt and my red album shirt those are all gone so all I have left are like one of the Target shirts and I think a very rare Harvey Mudd shirt so I'm not sure which one I'll wear tonight so my Friday ticket is I don't think it's fully obstructed but it is right next to the sound tower and it's also pretty far back into the side and behind a bunch of other sections. So when I saw where it was, I was like, I would rather sit somewhere else, especially after having my front row experience. I've been pilled, I've been pilled. So I went on StubHub and I saw that usually when you look closer to a show's date, the prices drop significantly. And there was one seat in the fourth row, a center diamond that had dropped significantly lower than all the other tickets around it. And just for a very brief period of time. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sell my other ticket and I'm gonna get this one instead. So that is exactly what I did. And so hopefully, I mean, the way that the diamond rows work, it's like, because there's like a skinny little sliver with like one or two seats in the front row, it basically means that like second, third, fourth row are like first, second, third, if, if that makes sense. Like you're a bit closer than you would be in, in a regular like one, two, three, four row. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be a good view because I got some amazing videos and I don't wanna take videos. I wanna like just completely rock and enjoy and be in the moment with Ms. Swift. That's what I'm most excited for. So I can't wait for the next couple of days. I think tomorrow I'm gonna do Reputation and then I'll do 1989 on Saturday. It is raining. I do not want these shoes to be getting wet. We are on our way to the National Stadium and it is pouring. pouring. And the entrance is uncovered and I'm wearing the shoes. And I really don't want my shoes to get wet. But I think we're gonna have a choice. I don't wanna get wet. 
I'm more important than your shoes. This is Jack, by the way. She's my friend from Poland. Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Jack. She's Swifty Agnostic. Would you say? Uh, Are you curious? A fan and not, but not really fan. Oh, I don't know. Like, I, I respect the hustle. I respect the girl. No, okay, that's where we stop. And what songs are you most excited to hear? It's a toss up, but it's something fun. It's definitely gonna be era. We're gonna dance our heart out. Oh, yeah. Because we saw her before. Yeah. During our We got scammed, but we did manage her. But we found our way in regardless. Um, Tenacity. Yeah, but if it's something like close to my heart, it's either all too well or listen. I know it! I know it! Yes! You got my baby! I love you the way you I really do. Even though we won't be the story's over and it's still riding crazy. Say goodbye, step by thousand cuts, flashbacks, pick me up. I can't jump, but it's not enough. Okay. I'm ready to become Nicki Minaj. We've been to Jingle Ball. This is your first full Taylor Swift concert. Yes. False. So, at some points I felt like I was in church, mm -hmm. and I'm, I used to be a religious person and I hated church, but it was so cathartic. This what what it was. song did you want to cry to the most? Um, all too well. Mm -hmm. But like the church vibes were like, Lord save me, my drug. Oh, don't blame me. Yeah. That what one. song did you want to dance? What song made you dance the hardest? I think I know. Which one? Style. Yes, but also. I like Yes, but also the, the ones on Lover, the first few songs, because oh, I had all the energy. Man, yeah. yeah. And do you see now why it's a marathon? Yes, but also what I really wanted to point out is the fact that as a ex-poetry writer, yeah. um, I appreciate lyrics. I get it. And she seems sincere. I was going to say, what changed after seeing her from how you felt about her before? It really felt sincere because we had seats where I couldn't see her as a person. Mm -hmm. She was just like this aunt. So it was not like I was so struck or whatever, but like her voice, the entire like energy that she was giving all throughout the stadium, I felt that. And, I, and the crowd was insane to me. Yeah, it, they were good. It was really good. Also, although there were still like people holding their phones. Yeah. Well, it is day five of the era's tour, and let me tell you girls, I'm slowly starting to fall apart. <laughs> my legs are hurting. I am kind of losing my voice. 
I'm starting to get pimples because I've just been sweating for too long without wiping off the sweat. And you know, it's diva. I'm not diva down, but I'm like diva mid. Fortunately, tonight I have upgraded my seat. So I will actually be in the fourth row this evening. I thought I was gonna be way, way back on the floor again, but I found a really good face value deal. So I sold the ticket that I had there and got a better one. I'm gonna be fourth row in the center diamond. The, in, the interesting thing about the center diamond is that because of the way that it's kind of angled, at least in Singapore, but I saw this in the States too, because it has like a skinny edge. I don't know how to describe it. First, second, and third rows are all kind of like more forward than they would be in a traditional row setting. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna get a really good view tonight because I'm ready for it. Last night was so, so good. It was my first night attending with my friend Jack, who you have seen by now. She had the time of her life. It was a really special experience to go with her to the Ares tour because she's such a close and long time friend of mine. And I've been spreading the gospel of Taylor Swift to her for years and years. And I guess curiosity finally killed the cat. And she had the greatest night of her life. She was dancing, she was singing. She said to her that the standout moments from the tour were all too well 10, we've been new, and illicit affairs, which I thought was very interesting. But we just had an incredible night. I didn't sit down, not for one second, maybe in between Folklore and 1989, but that's it. And the crowd was so loud, and I just feel like the energy in the room was like dialed up. It was way more than the previous three shows that I saw. And Taylor was in a really good mood. <laughs> she seemed like very, very pleased with the crowd's performance and behavior. And to that, we have to say, well done, Singapore, finally for you know showing up and doing some boots on the ground, screaming and shouting. It was really good. And the surprise songs, I got Death by a Thousand Cuts and Babe, and then I got 15 and you're on your own kid, which really just instantly sent me into tears. I think people are like really gagged to see me going full Swifty because it doesn't happen that often, but that's just because Taylor hasn't been touring for a while. So now you're seeing the real me. People who say that I hate her really just need to like revisit these reaction videos because it's clear that I have a connection to the music. The music is everything to me. So it was really beautiful to have that moment. I felt like I was holding hands with my 12 year old self and being like, you got this, you know, you're on your own kid, you always have been, and you slay the house down boots. So that was really special and it felt like such a treat. She really loves that song. I feel like she should just add it into the set already. The way that the rows are laid up kind of makes it so that row four is actually row one. So front row, two times in a row. More likely than you think. Also, this row is literally just two people. So, that's fine. This is my new friend. Hello. What's your name? Ma? What's your name? My name is... Um, Strong. From China. Yeah. We flew all the way here for the Eras tour. What? We flew all the way here for the Eras tour. Yeah. And it's just that you want to I'm lucky enough to stay in this day to say the most wonderful show in the world. Oh, yes. I'm so happy. It's going to be a good night. This night is literally
Don't keep us both of you. Everybody wants you. Everybody loses what it would be like to love you. All kinds of paintbrush. I don't like solution cover vision in rows. Yeah. I'm locked in up space in this city to see the most wonderful show in the world. I'm so happy to see you. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. So with the way, the way that the rows are laid up kind of makes it so that row four is actually row one. So front row, two times in a row, more likely than you think. Also this row is literally just two people, so that's fine. And I can see like, you know what's weird about being up front row is that you can see the like between moments on songs on stage. Like when the lights go down, you can still like see Taylor perfectly clearly. And there's this particular moment between, I think I knew you were trouble and all too well, where dancers come on stage and they like bring her jacket and they give her a sip of water. She was huffing and puffing last night. It was so humid. They were coming at her with this huge, heavy sequin jacket in that heat, I can't imagine. And she was like really trying to catch her breath. She was coughing a little bit. She took a sip of water. They were like mopping the back of her neck and her head. I think they had a little fan. And she literally had like 20 seconds to collect herself before having to smile and then go do a 10 minute song under the brightest, hottest light in the world in this humid ass stadium. So, I mean, major props to her stamina for this performance. I mean, I know she did a lot of preparation and training for it, but I think that the climate differences in performing in stadiums that are open air must be something that's really difficult to prepare for. And as I've said many times on, on the, in this video and on my TikTok, the humidity in Singapore is like not normal. It's not what you expect when you think of humidity. A lot of people, Americans, like would liken it to Florida, but it's like Florida, but dial it up like 10 times because this is a real tropical climate. And there are no fans on that stage that I can see. So I don't know how she does it. And last night was especially hot. Everyone around me had their little fans out while the show was going on. Uh, people were leaving early, they were getting water. And you know what? I was struggling last night. I'm not afraid to say it. I was struggling last night. I didn't realize that I was gonna be in the front row. I was in section PC2, which is like the diamond section that has a little sliver attached to it because it like goes up the edge of the side. And I presumed that because I was in row four, I would end up being in maybe row two or row three. I was row one. It was me and this guy in my row. And you'll meet him. <laughs> you probably will have met him already. He flew in from China specifically for the concert. And he was so excited. He had such a good time. Taylor looked at him so much and made so much eye contact with him. Um, and me too. I really noticed her like giving him extra love because he was truly having like a mental breakdown seeing her, which was lovely to see. And I have to say there was a Karen. There was a Karen security guard at the event last night. And you know, I've been to five shows now at this point. So I know the drill. I know what you can bring into the stadium. I know what you're allowed to do on the floor and what you're not allowed to do. She was just being a Karen for no reason at all. Like excited people were trying to just approach the front of the stage before even Sabrina Carpenter came on just to take pictures, like to take their little hand heart photos and say, I'm at the Eras tour. And they were people from behind, like the floor section, like way behind us. But also there were people from like the literal row behind where the front row is that just wanted to like step up and take a picture. And she, he full body blocked this guy who asked me to take a picture for him. He just wanted to stand there and take a photo. And she went, no, no. And like shoved her tiny little body up against him. And he was like, I'm not gonna fight an old lady to take a picture. What is going on here? Because I'd been on the floor in the front row the other night, like the other security members were not like this. There was no reason for her to be like that. And when Taylor came on, there is this big space between the front row seats and the barricades, and there's a taped line in front of your seat. And it literally, the line is so close to your chair that your feet, when you sit, your feet go over the line. So when we stood up, anytime me or the guy next to me would like, kind of angle our bodies because you're moving to watch Taylor go up and down, right? Anytime we would angle our bodies and a toe would go over the line, she would come up and push you back. She would like move, move back behind the line, back behind the line. So annoying and for no reason whatsoever. It didn't have to be like that. Again, on the other side of the stage, Taylor's security brought us up to the barricade. None of this nonsense about stay behind the line, let alone that it was come up as close as you would like to come. 
not for this lady, not for this Karen. And so when the surprise songs rolled around, I pulled out my light, which I have used at every single show. They let me into the stadium with it. Everyone around me is fine with it. I always like look around and I'm like, is it okay? If someone is obviously upset, I would put it away, but that has not happened to me before. And the lady was like, you're gonna distract the performer. I was like, her name's Taylor Swift, in case you didn't know. Second of all, she's over there. I'm behind the diamond with the flashlight facing me and the screen behind me. Taylor Swift could not be further away and she's facing away from me. There is no conceivable realm in which I was distracting Taylor Swift from doing her performance. So I told her this was ridiculous and she went away. She went away and then she came back and said, actually security told me that you have to put it down. And I was really annoyed because by then Sparks Fly had just started and she like interrupted me in the middle of the surprise song to give me this stupid pointless note and tell me to put my flash away. And it was just irritating to me because it took me out of the moment in the surprise songs and it kind made me pissed off and she'd just been hassling everyone the entire night and no one was happy with her and then in between like she when she would give me a criticism or something then after a while she would come over and try and like say sorry or talk to me and be like you know I have to and Taylor is performing right Taylor is singing I'm like I don't want to spend my night talking to you I don't care about what you have to say if you're gonna tell me not to do something uh, fine I just won't do it but I don't need to hear the explanation so leave me alone um, so that was really irritating. But other than that, I was in the front row and it was amazing. And I gave this tip on my TikTok, but like if you're doing general admission for any of the Europe shows, I recommend that if you're trying to get front row, if you're gonna camp and do all that effort, it needs to be not at the actual diamond itself, but at the beginning of the catwalk that's connected to the diamond. This is because if you get the diamond, you're either looking at her back the entire time or looking at her entirely side on. And the diamond part of the stage is higher and the lights, the lighting fixtures are really big and they rotate and move a lot. So you're actually kind of a little bit obstructed, especially if you're right up against the barricade. So I would recommend like the first night I had front row was incredible. I saw everything I needed to see. When she goes up on the lift, she's directly facing you. If you're behind the diamond or at the side, you don't see her when she's up on the lift, which is kind of annoying because that's where some of the most iconic moments happen. So that's how I would recommend that you organize your seating. Tonight, I am kind of like in the stalls yet again where I was with my friend Jack and I'm going with my dad tonight. He's gonna be wearing a Midnight's fit. I'm pretty sure he couldn't name one single Midnight song if you asked him to, and <laughs> I'm gonna ask him. Uh, but I'm, I'm very sure that he can. I'm gonna make him do a 13 on his hand. And tonight, I'm not going early. I am, by the way, exhausted. Air's tour has like beaten my life. But nevertheless, I am so grateful to have had this experience. And I have had the time of my life just being silly and filming surprise song reactions and like truly just indulging my inner child. A lot of people have said that it's been really nice to see me go full Swifty. And that's exactly what happens when I see Taylor and Tora. I think people forget that because I am able to have this critical remove of like looking at who she is as an artist and what she means in the culture, that doesn't negate the fact that I have a very intense parasocial fan connection to her as well. I can critique it and be aware of it and also engage in it at the same time. I do get a comment every now and again being like, you're supporting your billionaire. In my billionaire video, I said at the very beginning, I'm still gonna buy merch, I'm still gonna go to shows. All that I'm saying is we don't need to insist that she's an ethical billionaire and deny reality. So this is the last night of the Ears Roar, what songs do I want? Well, I have been so lucky with my surprise song divas. I've been getting at least one or two divas every single night, which is so rare. And it's just having the time of my life fighting dragons with myself, with Taylor Swift, with the security lady, with the Karen. I've been having the best time. Because I'm doing 1989 tonight, how Gorgina are these shoes? I mean, come on, this might be like the best, most eye-catching pair. I feel like I've said that about every pair of shoes at this point, but they're all so good. Teresa did an incredible job. Uh, because of that, I would like to hear All You Have To Do Is Stay. I'm always ready for I Wish You Would as well. I'm also ready for New Romantics, if that's on offer to me. I think probably she's gonna be doing slinky sexy songs or I'm In Love songs because, you know, Travis is in the building. Last night I had Sparks Fly and Gold Rush, iconic. The beginning of that was ruined for me by Karen. I'll never forgive her for that. But when Gold Rush came in, I was tuned the fuck in. It was incredible. Those songs are so like, just about that first glance feeling about wanting to fall into the tornado of a new person. So I loved hearing those together. I thought the arrangement was super cool. Then we had False God and Slut, which is a very interesting combination that I'm gonna need to analyze at a later date. Some people will be mad, but I don't care. Then what, you crazy girl. Nostalgic, oh my god, debut. Uh,
maybe I should go back to the beginning. Oh my god, I really wanted to take you so Is it teardrops? Back to the very beginning. What are you doing? I'm <laughs> doing <laughs> this. I'm doing 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 divas this is my final check-in after the eras tour i got to go last night with my dad and it was truly such a magical experience i felt like i was a kid taking my dad to school and showing him my art project <laughs> that was really the vibe that i was getting and you know a lot of this music is stuff that he's been hearing emanating from my teenage room at whatever point in my life and he really enjoyed seeing me in my element seeing me enjoy the thing that i love the most and also he really appreciated like the production value he said that he was so taken aback by the scale and the size of the show and Taylor's professionalism and her performance ability. He particularly loved Enchanted. That's one of his favorite songs. And he loved the red section of the show. And he pointed out Tolerate It and My Tears Ricochet as like some of his favorite songs. He also said, quote, that his favorite performance was Shake It Up. Yeah, last night was probably one of the funnest nights that I had just because I got to share it with my dad. And my dad is so supportive of me and always is like, he watches all my videos. And yeah, I'm just so lucky to have such a supportive and incredible parent. So that is my era's journey. I mean, six nights of the era's tour is definitely excessive. Don't get me wrong. I am a Taylor Swift obsessive. I have been for years and years. To me, this was the only thing that was ever going to happen. There was no chance she was going to be in Singapore and I wasn't going to be attending all the shows. I actually feel pretty good today because last night I used a massage gun on my feet and I had roti prata again for breakfast this morning. So I'm cured. I would say I'm cured of my ailments and Taylor's stamina as a performer and as an artist. I mean, I just, I am so much in awe of her as a performer and and her ability to command a room and also make it feel so intimate and make it feel as though she's singing just specifically to you when you're in this massive room with so many other people who feel just as connected as you do. It's a true skill and a feat and a pleasure and a joy to experience and to be in her generation as an artist is really a special thing. I hope you like this video and if you like my podcast Evolution of a Snake and you live in the London area, Evolution of a Snake will be doing a one night only performance in London at the Unicorn Theatre on June 20th and tickets go on sale on March 15th for Patreon members and March 18th for everyone else. So news of that is coming very, very soon. Stay tuned to the Evolution of Snake Instagram and the podcast for more details, but I can't wait to see you all there. I'm so excited for the, what this year brings. And you'll also be getting another Eras Tour vlog of that occasion and all my reaction to the Dublin and London surprise songs as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this journey with me. I will see you next time. Goodbye, Swifties.